Major Hurricane Aaron is throwing all types of impacts and influence through the Turks and Caicos, the Bahamas, where tropical storm warnings are in effect. We're going to feel a lot of it against the eastern seaboard of central Florida, and then the mid-Atlantic could also see some fairly extensive coastal impacts over the next three or four days. Same with Bermuda on the immediate right-hand side of where Aaron is expected to track. On top of that, We've got another area of interest that's quickly climbing the ropes in terms of favorable chances. This becomes our next name, Storm. Next name on the list would be Fair Non. Y'all are going to have a lot of fun pronouncing that out there. We're going to talk all about that in today's tropical update. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your Monday to join me here in the Weather Center. It is August 18th, 2025. I've got a lot of information for you today. So if you're brand new to the channel or have been lurking in the background for our last few tropical updates, it would mean the world to all of us here in the Weather Center community. If you kindly consider hitting that subscribe button, giving that like button a little nudge, we need all the nudges we can get because there's going to be a lot of noise out there with Aaron as it continues to wiggle and wobble further towards the north and especially this new area of interest hot in pursuit let's go ahead and share this information as well with folks you think would benefit from it and drop me a comment in the comment section down below let me know where you're watching from if you've been hearing anything differently about either one of these features or if you have any questions comments or concerns I always make it a point to get back to all you lovely viewers and with that let's go ahead and get started so here is National Hurricane Center's home page. We still have a major hurricane out there, a solid Category 4. However, as of the 2 o'clock advisory, we have filled approximately 2 millibars. Minimum central pressure is up 2 millibars in comparison to the 11 a.m. advisory. Max sustained winds in the center, however, are still at 140 miles an hour, and some gradual strengthening could still take place if the little bit of dry air that's already working its way into the center and some northern wind shear that's buffeting the northern half of this storm don't continue to win out and then just upstream of that like i had mentioned we now have disturbance number one likely to take on invest 99 l within the next day or two stick with me towards the back half of this video i've got a really interesting fun fact about 99 l now up to a 10% shot of development over the next two days, 60% over the next seven days. We could very well go code red with this by the 8 o'clock update this evening, if not tomorrow morning with the way the models continue to trend. Development looks certain at this point, whether it be a tropical depression or our next name storm, Fair Non. We're going to have to see about that. It's going to be a lot of fun to pronounce out there over on social media and on broadcast. And then the huge fork in the road really hinges on what Aaron does over the next three or four days. Here's a look at some of the latest info as well as the latest forecast track for Hurricane Aaron. We do maintain major hurricane intensity until late in the evening on Wednesday before shear and dry air really begin to play a role in unraveling the system we're also going to start to feel the influence of our polar front jet working across the northern united states kind of running parallel to the international border of the u.s and canada and that's what should ideally take this puppy and kick it off towards the northeast in rapid fashion you can see between 8 a.m thursday and 8 a.m saturday we cover a lot of ocean once this really finally picks up some of that forward speed and that's the kicker that truthfully my friends is what hinges on creating a path for the upstream feature if and when it develops. If Aaron continues to drag its heels, I'm going to tell you that right now. If this thing continues to move slow and keeps wobbling back and forth like everyone's been talking about with these shifts, that will almost guarantee that our next system follows the same type of track. We may get some impacts down there in the Leeward Islands, the Greater Antilles. Same thing with the Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas. We're probably not going to get out of that one regardless of which way it turns. But if Aaron remains large, slow, and sloppy, that will likely contribute to the next one recurving safely away from the United States. If we can kick Aaron up out of there, that means it's more or less game on for us here in the United States, and the models are doing a fantastic job of highlighting that. Now, let's move over to the infrared. You can see this system's definitely looking a lot worse for wear. And I want you to first look at the first or the upper half of this system. 
See how it's a lot more flat than the southern half of it? The southern half, you still have a nice crescent shape if you were to cut a line directly west to east through the center of the storm. The northern half, however, is kind of off kilter with the anti-cyclone that's developed overhead, providing it with its outflow. So while we're still seeing some of that exhaust mechanism, it's also helping to increase the mid and upper level winds coming in out of the north straight across the center of circulation. And you can honestly see how this thing is becoming very very, very cockeyed as a result of it, kind of stacking more north to southeast at this point, north, north, east, west to southeast as the satellite loop goes on. It also very well looks like we have some dry air working into this thing, which is starting to wrap in on the west side and down along the southern base of it. You can kind of see how there was a sudden collapse in our colder cloud tops, making way for warmer cloud tops right in through there. It's getting into the center. So this system is fighting for its life. Very reminiscent of Hurricane Lee a couple years ago. A lot of folks were still saying it could reobtain Category 5 and intensity, but it just never quite made the cut, and I do think that's what's happening here. In fact, I'm not even sure we really rapidly intensify that much more, and when I say rapidly intensify, I don't mean we go into that phase where this thing starts cooking off. I want to stay away from that buzzword, but I mean we don't see that strengthening as predicted by National Hurricane Center. All of our hurricane models also do anticipate some steady weakening at this point. And that's the primary reason this thing's going to get so big. Don't let other folks confuse you. This is going to be a fairly expansive storm. We're going to get a little bit of a reintroduction of mid to upper level moisture coming off the mid-Atlantic coast in the form of an upper trough that's going to grab this thing, as well as a stationary boundary that's already draped through that area. So naturally, when you introduce a little little bit of extra moisture to these tropical cyclones, their feeder bands and their reach will grow out a little bit. Think of it like a weed. It starts off in one point and then it branches off into all sorts of different points or spans out across the roof or the side of your house or a fence or wherever the case may be. Or like a spider web, it starts with one strand and eventually just grows out. On top of that, as it continues to expand, when you think about it from the general law of physics, it's not going to have as intense of wind speeds within the core. Sure, the reach will expand out, and you'll feel a little bit more of the impacts if you're on the immediate coastline, but it's not going to be anything destructive. There'll be more gale force style conditions, almost similar to what kind of winds you'd feel after a cold front comes through, just associated with a deep, low pressure system that will slowly be undergoing the transition from tropical to non-tropical. That's typically why we start to see these things expand, because it's actually a sign of them making that transition and weakening. So let's continue on. Let's go ahead and show you the true color visible satellite shot real quick, and you can kind of see that dry air channel working its way in on the south side. I'll go ahead and draw it in for you. We're looking right in through there. You can see it carving like almost a crescent moon shape moving in towards the center, and that's why that eye is having a hard time to really reestablish itself after having underwent an eye wall replacement cycle late yesterday into this morning, and now it's really having a hard time. It was kind of like Hurricane Idalia a couple years back in 2023 as well. What saved the coast of Florida was that eye wall replacement cycle. So now here's a look at your winds, the mid-level flow all the way up to about 200 millibars, mid to upper level flow. This is your deep layer steering, looking at all slices of the atmosphere, more or less. There's your call, the neutral point in the winds. That's exactly what this feature is feeling. We've got due southerly flow helping to steer this up and away now, so we should be preparing to see that full bonafide turn here momentarily. And then on top of that, we have that digging trough up here to the north that I'd mentioned that should start to help give it a little little pep in its step, start to get it moving and increasing in its forward speed. And that's really what's going to dictate what this subtropical ridge does across the Atlantic as we continue to monitor that next tropical wave. This is also why, in regards to that tropical wave, before I show you some of the ensembles, why the Euro and the GFS are on two very different sides of the pedestal here. They're on two very different sides of the scale. We got Euro and the Euro AI starting to look more Aaron reminiscent, where it recurves as it starts to interact with the Turks and Caicos right around that 70 West longitude line, whereas the GFS, I'm sure you all have seen it plastered all over social media, GFS continues it further towards the West. The first three to five days of the storm is fairly ironed out. It will generally track towards the west and west-northwest as CAT 
caught a really good slice of winds right over top that area of interest. And it does look like we have a bit of a favoring to the south and west of all that convection down there in the greater tropical Atlantic. And you know what? I'll go ahead and pull that up as well so I can give you that visual representation as we continue to talk about it. So we'll switch to your long wave IR out there in the greater tropics, and it's this feature right there. There you go. You can kind of see a pretty obvious mid-level circulation attached to a bunch of the convection that's still bundled up in the ITCZ and the extension of the monsoon trough coming out of western, southwestern Africa. We also have another healthy tropical wave continuing to work its way off the coast of Africa. Does look fairly robust. Models do show at least initial phases of it trying to organize before a dump of dry air comes in from the northeast off of continental Europe, northwest Africa, around the backside, or I should say the front side of our high pressure in the Atlantic. But then don't look now. We have another MCS preparing to make its way into the Atlantic and turn into our next tropical wave. So we're not quite done yet. This is going to be a very sloppy configuration to try to iron out for our models, though. So don't be surprised if we see some dramatic swings across all of them that we're going to have to pay attention to until we can iron out the low levels of the environment. But here is what seems to be throwing the models for a loop. This is your PNA pattern, again, the Pacific North American Oscillation, courtesy of the Euro Ensemble. And I want you to look what happens towards the end of August, right here when it matters most for that tropical system, potential tropical system, to be trying to make a run for the southeast and the mid-Atlantic United States. This is the Euro, and then this is the latest GFS. You see what happened there? We're once again playing the game of one model is sniffing out something totally different over North America versus another model. And this is a huge fluctuation. The intensity or the amplitude of both of these upper air patterns, this shows extensive blocking troughing over the eastern United States. This one shows an extension of that subtropical ridge building back in from the Atlantic and extending up over the southeast, which would up our temperatures. So that's another thing we'll have to pay attention to, our temperature anomaly charts for the United States and how those behave. If we start to see a surge of warmth, then we can kind of lead with the GFS is probably going to verify in this case. So we'll have to wait and see. That's a huge discrepancy between the models, and we also still have to iron out how fast or how slow Aaron decides to move. But you can see here on the latest probabilities earlier this afternoon, 12Z, we are almost to that maxed out threshold, especially within the first three to four days. You can see the probabilities are favoring at least a tropical depression to form once we get beyond about 45 west longitude. The central to western main development region, we're already at 85 to 90 percent, which has been steadily ticking up over the last two to three days since I last saw you on Saturday. And that is where we hit that fork in the road. So you can see it's either going to follow the same general path path as Aaron, or it's going to move into the southeast United States. It's very tricky to determine, though, because what I want to show you now are our ensembles here. So these are the ensembles courtesy of the Euro, and you can see right about to about the five to seven day point, we are pretty consistent. That natural fanning out effect is occurring where some of the members want to scrape this through much of our greater Antilles with almost direct impacts. However, from a weaker storm due to that land interaction, others show a quick and easy out curving pattern up back towards Bermuda or just to the west of Bermuda, all because of the spread in Hurricane Aaron. If you look at this, this is valid for the 25th. This is next Monday, seven days from now. Some of our ensemble members say that because of the large speed spread in Aaron, especially for the Euro, this thing could still be parked somewhere off the coast of Maine, if not Atlantic Canada, easternmost Atlantic Canada, which is wild to imagine. I feel like at this point, the Euro may be struggling a little bit because typically as you increase the latitude of these tropical cyclones, even if this thing does continue to unravel and expand, naturally the conservation of angular momentum inertia and especially the Coriolis force are going to kick in. That's why no matter what, no matter how strong or weak a system is, the further north you park it, the faster it tends to move just because of the simple spin of the earth. So I don't know how we would really pick up speed between southern Florida and North Carolina 
and then slow back down again. We're going to have to iron that out. I'm not feeling that too well from the Euro model, at least. The AI model... National Hurricane Center doesn't seem to be buying into it because that thing shows a curve before the Lesser Antilles, and I don't quite think that's what's going to happen either. You take a look at the first seven days of the GEFS, the GFS ensembles, and you can see we're right in line with the Euro. So at least the first three, five, potentially seven days. Seven days is where you really start to see the spread increase. So I would go as far as to say the first three to five days are primarily hashed out. We still have some moving parts we have to monitor, but the kicker here is what Aaron does and how it influences the pattern across the Atlantic. If this thing does stay fairly strong, Cat 3, Cat 4... Once the outflow begins to interact with the jet stream, we'll do what's called pump the ridge. We'll inflate the ridge a little bit. And then naturally, because low pressure spins counterclockwise, as that low pressure continues to curve up towards the north and northeast, it's going to ruin the upper air pattern over the North Atlantic, kind of break down the surface phenomena and push our surface high pressure further south and create a little bit more of a blocking ridge, that negative NAO pattern that I've been mentioning the last couple updates. So... It's not a slam dunk forecast, but we know what to watch for. And I'm hoping I'm not jinxing myself right now because the last time I said this so confidently looking at the science and the numbers with what became Aaron, all of a sudden the next day I woke up and everything was turned upside down. So we'll have to wait and see. That's going to be the big piece there. And then it still continues to look like the end of August into early September is going to be wishy-washy. The environment and climatologically speaking will still be prone to developing some tropical cyclones. We have another Kelvin wave that may help to retro grade some of our lift back over Africa, but it does look like we will still have to deal with dry air and some wind shear to the north of the immediate main development region in the Atlantic. I switch over to the CFS here, and you can see the same thing on the CFS as we go further through time. This is valid out till September 1st, and you can see we still have a pretty good standing wave configuration right over top Africa, and it doesn't quite stop there. According to the climate forecasting system, it keeps that lift hanging out there, but then we'll also be doing battle with a little bit of that favorability spreading into the eastern Pacific. And then as we go beyond the first week of September, there's going to be a little latency there. It could be the first week of September we're on a break before things kick back off or vice versa. We might see a bit of a short-lived dead phase as the MJO moves back over the maritime continents. And then we'll talk all about exactly what that could possibly do to our ENSO regions out there. Because we are now under a La Nina watch. So even though we've been battling Aaron, talking Aaron, exhausting ourselves with Aaron, and then what could possibly come 99L over the next couple days, we still may have a very busy September and especially October, a la 2024, ahead of us. And that's all, we, that's all we got for you today. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you if you've stuck around to the end of the video. And if you did, 99L, fun fact... The last three iterations of 99L were supposed to be Florida storms. The most recent 99L was actually Sarah, last hurricane season. Was forecasted to come to Florida as a major hurricane. Central America took the bullet, jumped on the grenade for us. Then the last two 99Ls were Helene and Milton. So marinate on that. A little bit of kind of spookiness pre-spooky season since we're only in the midst of August right now. But I thought that was very interesting, and I wanted to pass that along to you, just something to kind of ponder on. Almost kind of sounds like fate to an extent. But, you know, not rooted in science at all. I just thought that was a very fun tidbit. Thank you all so much for sticking around. You've been a wonderful audience. It's been a pleasure communicating with everybody. We're probably going to be doing another live stream tomorrow evening once I iron out my schedule a little bit more. Full week ahead, we're going to be tracking Aaron as well as that next AOI, and I'll have all the latest for you here on the channel. But until next time, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.